Hey, welcome back to the testing series. We're talking about Rails testing. We've gone through the whole process of setting up uh, RSpec Rails and Factory Bot and a few different tools. And we've gone through some basic model testing, some basic job testing. What I wanted to talk about today was making third party API requests or API requests where you're writing like the raw HTML. So in the previous episode, we made a job test where we used uh, stubbing to stub out a method on the Stripe customer underlying client library. And in this episode, I wanted to talk about stubbing out the actual HTTP request using a tool called WebMock. So the first thing we want to do with WebMock is to install the gems. So we're going to open up our gem file, head down to uh, the test group only, uh, and we're going to say WebMock here. And then the next thing we need to do is to go to our spec helper and say uh, require WebMock uh, RSpec, I believe. And we want to say bundle install. Okay, now that we have WebMock installed, we can start playing around with our tests. So if we go over to app jobs, recall that we have a job here called update tickers job. And this is using REST client to make a get HTTP request out to this external URL. This is part of the sec.gov's website. It just returns a giant list of tickers. So we can actually like take this, head over to a new tab and say curl this thing and we'll pipe it into less. And that will download the file and you can see that it's the name of the ticker, so Microsoft, and then it's CIK. And that's all it is, is a giant, um, I guess it's tab delimited file with ticker to CIK mappings. And so what we wanna do is write a little test for this job so that we can ensure that it is performing as expected, but we don't wanna make an actual HTTP request. So let's go look at how we might do that. So I'm gonna use um, Rails G R spec install or um, model, we wanna create a new or no, we want to create a new test for a job. Update tickers is the name of the job, or it's like update tickers job, but we actually want to just say update tickers and then it will add on underscore job for us. So I just say update tickers and then we're going to open up the spec here and we want to say like it, um, I don't know, makes or it, yeah, fetches the uh, tickers from the SEC. Uh, and we want to say update tickers job dot perform now that's actually going to fire off the job and we'll start out with this exercise and see if we need to do any setup and add any assertions. So let's run this test here and we are going to see it. Okay. So now we see that the test failed and it says web uh, net connection, not allowed error. Real HTTP connections are disabled unregistered connect or unregistered request a get request to this external third party with these headers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it even gives you the code to stub it out. So I'm actually just gonna copy this code and drop that in right above our test. Um, it came in a little weird. We actually don't need any of these headers. And I think that is all we really need is we wanna stub out the get request to that URL and we expect it to return a 200. The body is actually gonna be some other request body. So what we might do is say that like body is equal to, and then we can put in like a here doc um, here that has like all of our uh, things. So MSFT and then um, I forget, it was like some some big value. So let's let's actually just grab like the first few here and we'll drop those in. So this is kind of what we expect to come back from the from the API. And in fact, I'm just gonna have it return the first three results. And we're gonna stub that request and that's gonna be our return value for our body. And once we say perform now, it should, uh, now the test should at least succeed because we are now stubbing out the request. So I'm gonna run this again. All right. Now we're seeing that uh, null values in the column CIK violates the non-null constraint. So the CIK in this case, we're actually executing ticker sick dot find or create by ticker and sick. And so it was not able to, uh, it was not able to figure out one of these for some reason. So let's jump into our, t into that implementation uh, for update. Here we go. And then we will say, Ah, so this is split on tab. I wonder if these are actually tabs. So this needs to be um, tab. So yeah, I th when I did a retab, it switched those from tabs to spaces. 
All right, let's see if that works. No, it's still failing. Okay, so in order to see how or why this test is failing, I'm gonna drop in a debugger here. I'm gonna say by bug. And that should break on execution so that we can see what's going on. All right, so now if we see mapping, the first, okay, so yeah, so we see there, um, the mappings are not actually split into tuples of like Microsoft comma the other thing, because I think one of these pairs is not is not actually splitting on T or it's not seeing slash T. So if we have, um, let's actually uh, continue and let's make this a, an actual raw string where we will put in the, um, the real values. So we'll say like this is uh, slash T slash N and then I'm just going to join this in manually write out the tabs in new lines so that our parsing works. Um, okay, and then that should be a quote. Sometimes getting the body, like the format of the body right can be a little tricky. So now when we look at mapping, it's now broken out correctly into the ticker and then it's CIK. So this should succeed fine. Okay, great. So now, now we're no longer seeing any failures. Um, and we assume that this is like, it should uh, work with stubbed body, right? And then what we want to do is we, we also want to ensure that it's actually creating these ticker sick things. And so um, if we look at the actual job here, right? What it's doing is it's iterating over all of the mappings that it got back between the ticker symbol and the CIK. And then it's trying to find or create the ticker sick combination given the ticker and the sick. And again, I don't know if I'm saying that right, CIK, but whatever. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make some assertions that like this is actually either finding or creating. And so given three different ticker and sick combinations, I think what we might wanna do is before we run the job, this is gonna be again, part of setup, is we can create a ticker and sick combo that matches the above. And um, then we will run our job and assert that three more or that two more ticker sicks were created and one was like actually found. So let's say uh, ticker sick is create uh, ticker sick with uh, ticker being Microsoft and the CIK being the one that it had there. So this number, um, so that should create one that'll already be in the database before we perform and that should be found with our finder create. And then when we run this, we wanna expect that running this job to change we want, it, we want it to change the result of another block where we're gonna say ticker sick dot count dot by two. So we want it to change the total count of ticker six by two. So it should actually just create two of them instead of creating three. So we're returning, um, we're returning three different ticker six in our, in our like dubby body for the stub request response and we are then putting one in the database and asserting that two were created. So that's like one way to make sure that this is actually happening. So let's see if we can run this job. Okay, uh, the factory is not registered. We need to create the factory. So Rails G RSpec model ticker sick. That should create both the, uh, the spec file and the factory for us. So it created the factory for ticker six. That's great. Now we can run it again and see if this works. Success. Okay, so let's comment this bit out and make sure that it's still working or that it fails. We want it to fail, right? Okay, so now it's a ticker sick dot count should have changed by two, but it was changed by zero because nothing is actually being created. So that's how we can assert that it is actually being created. Now, another thing that we might wanna do is make sure that we have now a total of expect like ticker sick dot count dot two equal three after we've run this because we wanted to create one here and then we wanted to create two more. And then we might even expect uh, ticker uh, sick dot find by ticker of AMZN dot um, CIK dot two equal what came back. So this is like 
a way to make assertions on both Amazon and Google to make sure that we are parsing and creating the correct ticker stick mappings. So now if we run this again, um, it is succeeding. And if we were to comment out like, or make maybe add something like blah to the sick before it's added to the database, that should help um, our test fail. And the, uh, ah, right. So then this is also now gonna fail blah. So sometimes making the test fail is like a little trickier than making it pass. Um, okay, so. Anyways, this should be this should be working successfully now, and um, that is one of the ways that you can use WebMock. So here we, the very first thing we did was we tried to make an HTTP request after installing or, okay. So the very first thing we did was install WebMock, and then when we tried to make an HTTP GET request to this URL, WebMock failed because it didn't want to allow us to make HTTP requests. That is like a safety feature. We don't actually want to hit live HTTP endpoints as part of tests most of the time because networks can be de non-deterministic. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down. Depends on where the tests are running. Sometimes API endpoints change. So we don't actually want to hit the endpoint. Instead, we want to mock out the endpoint and make assertions about what we know to be true as long as we're getting back the body that is deterministic and expected. So we kind of like stub out the, we stub out the request and we give it a specific body that we know we're going to get back. And then we make assertions about what would happen if we got that body back from the response. We could also do other things like what if it got, what if, what if um, our endpoint got a 300? Did the, you know, did the error handling work as expected or if it got a 400 or 500, et cetera. Um, but this should get you started with WebMock. It's another tool that you can use. Um, there is yet another tool called VCR. That's another gem that you can use for sort of recording the outbound requests and then replaying them. That can be really handy if you're working with more complex sort of um, request or, or response bodies that you need to have like much more detail in the response body uh, rather than just being able to sort of like hard code and write out the, the, the response body manually like this. You might want to use VCR. All right, so that wraps up how we're going to use WebMock as part of our RSpec uh, tool suite. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.